found off Fremantle in the Indian Ocean, Western Australia, on board a Riviera 47, which a friend of mine has lent us to use while we do a demonstration on towing a tender. He owns a Brig 620, which is the perfect tender for this sort of boat, and they're often used as uh, main tenders for people staying on their boats at Rocknest Island. The important thing in towing the boat is having the right tow line. Now, we don't know the exact right length to make these lines yet, so we've got 70 metres of 18 metre, 18 mil silver rope here, silver line, which floats. Very important it floats, because if you do have to back up in an emergency, there's less chance of you running over this than wrapping around your props. I'm not saying that it won't happen though, so you've got to be very careful, we'll get to that. So, 70 metres of line, there's hopefully extra line there, so we'll, when, when the time comes we'll cut it to the right length. Split it in half, splice the carabiner, rated carabiner hook in here, stainless steel. Now the next trick is to lay these out so they can easily feed out when we're ready to go. Now when you're towing a tender, you shouldn't run it with the outboard right down because it creates a lot of drag. There's a sweet spot where you sit the outboard and what we're trying to achieve is just have the fin of the outboard at the bottom of the leg just touching the water, acting as a bit of a keel to keep the, the tender central. So I'm going to trim it up, hopefully get it in the right spot. This is a bit of trial and error as well, working out exactly where to put the outboard. Because when the outboard is sitting in the water stationary, the fin is in the water at a different position compared with when the, the tender is running. So the captain is going to idle forward slowly until we have all the line out. Make sure you don't have the line wrapped around your feet. A bit slower, Tim. It's out of gear, that's it. A V towing system, as opposed to a single line, aids in keeping the tender right behind your boat and in its central position. It also acts as a, a backup because you've got double the strength of line. And I just find that it works a little bit better. Everyone to their own, but that's what I prefer to do. The stern wave or V wave at the rear of any monohull boat that's uh, planing or semi-planing varies in size from boat to boat and at different speeds. So the trick with towing a tender is that you ensure the tender is way back so that it can't possibly leave that V section. The slower you're going, the greater the angle of the V. The faster you're going, the more acute is the V. So the faster you're going, the tender needs to be way back, probably two boat lengths if you're doing 20 knots, that's what we found. And if you're doing half that speed, you can, you can haul it into maybe two thirds or half that distance. Of course, when we did this demonstration, the ocean was flat calm, and it's going to be rare that you're towing a tender in those conditions, I would think, particularly here in Western Australia or Fremantle. So if you do have a following sea, you've got to be mindful of the fact that the tender can be picked up by swells and can surf and end up going faster than your, your tow boat. So it's at that point where it can leave the V and potentially roll over. It's very important that when you're turning the mothership or the tow boat, you keep an eye on the tender because as soon as the tender gets outside the central wash area, you can end up uh, surfing some of your own boat wash and slew all over the place. And it's at that point where she could easily end up side on to the outside V wash and upside down. So constant vigil once again, and you may have to adjust your speed or take a very slow turn rather than a sharp turn. Now with this image here, 
we've actually halved the length of the tow line to half of 35 metres and we're sitting on between 18 and 20 knots and you can notice when we make a slight turn to starboard the tender gets very very close to the edge of that feed wash and we actually backed off a little bit so it wouldn't go over the edge. Uh, it wasn't my tender, I didn't want to lose it. So very important, keep the tender, if you're going fast, keep the tender at least two, two boat lengths back from your tow boat, but monitor at all times. The top image here, the tow vessel is doing 15 knots and the tow line is half length, which is about a boat length behind the mothership, and that's fine. The V-wash is quite wide and that's perfectly safe. The below picture, the mothership's doing 20 knots and the tender is double the boat length behind and that's also very safe because it's well within the V-wash. One more thing to consider though is when you're going slower, there's a parabolic wave that follows you. If you're on the hump speed, say 15 knots, and you need to make sure the tender is sitting ahead of the swell, ahead of the wave, and not sitting on top of it or behind it where there'd be extra drag. Once you get to your destination, it's not advisable cruising in with your tender 35 metres behind you. Uh, you'll end up wrapping it around a mooring buoy or another boat. So you need to, to haul it in. As soon as you're in protected waters, haul it in. Uh, get it closer to your, your, your tow boat, your mothership. Uh, you can have it towed behind you although you're going to need someone looking after it just to keep an eye on it so it doesn't run into the back of you. Alternatively, you raft alongside. Uh, in my next video, I'll be talking about how to raft alongside so it tows correctly. And it's also a great way to learn how to tie your boat up, your tender up, so it's not bashing your mothership all night and keeping you awake and jarring and yawing and snatching. So stay tuned. Thanks very much for listening to this, and I hope it was helpful. Special thanks also to Tim Flavel for the use of his Riviera and Brig and to Mark from Sirocco Marine Perth for his advice on tenders.